Hi, thanks for joining us today. My name is Taylor. Today's topic is going to be stairs basics for straight and curved stairs. We do have a good amount of chief staff available with me today. So as you have questions, feel free to type them into the question section on the GoToWebinar panel. They'll uh, answer your questions as we go. At the end of the presentation or afterwards, we'll be opening up for a Q&A session. Myself and my colleagues will be able to answer any questions you might have. Just use the uh, raise hand option in the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll just call on you as we go. Be sure to unmute your mic before you ask your questions. The session is being recorded, so in the next couple of days, we'll send out a, a replay of that. Along with that email, there's going to be a survey in there as well. Feel free to let us know how we did. We appreciate any and all feedback. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All of the stair tools in Chief Architect can be accessed through the stairs icon in the top toolbar or in the menu under Build, then Stairs. Here you'll find Draw Stairs, Straight Stairs, Curve Left and Right, L-shaped and U-shaped stairs, as well as the Ramp and Landing tools. I'll be covering the basic functionality of all of these except the Ramp and Landing tools, as they'll be discussed in another webinar. But before we jump into the tools themselves, like most things in Chief Architect, it's a good idea to take a look at the defaults before we start placing objects. That way you'll know what you're placing into your plan beforehand. This is often much more efficient than placing an object only to realize that you need to resize it or change the way that it looks afterward. There are two ways to access the stairs defaults. First, through the default settings dialog found either under the edit menu or at the top of your toolbar, then scrolling down this list to stairs and ramps. Or, and this is the method I personally prefer, simply double clicking on the toolbar icon of the tool that you want to access the defaults for, in this case, the stairs icon. This works with most any tool and either accesses the tool's specific defaults or, like in the case of stairs, accesses all available defaults for that type of tool. Since Chief Architect doesn't have specific interior or exterior stairs tools, the program will automatically determine which type of stair to create based on where it's placed. So we can specify each type here so that we know what to expect in either instance. Selecting the interior stairs default, then clicking Edit, I'm shown the default specification dialog. Here, I can choose exactly how I want my interior stairs to look. I'll be going over more of the information here in the general panel in a few minutes, but for right now, I'm mostly concerned with the stair width. We default to a typical 39 inch wide stair, but if you need to change this, it's best to set it here before you place your stairs. All of the stair specifications can be changed after they're placed, but since tread width can change how they get placed, it's probably best to set this beforehand. If you like, you can explore the rest of these panels and customize the stairs further. For instance, under Style, we can specify the general look of the stairs, their tread thickness and overhang, open risers or closed risers. We can customize the stringers and brake line, which we'll talk about more in a moment, and how and where to place railings. By default, we build baluster railings on either side of the stairs and a wall railing anywhere where the stairs meet a wall. And these can be set on either side of the stairs as needed. We can also specify what materials the various stairs components we made out of most notably the riser and tread materials, as well as the railing materials, newels, balusters, etc. Okay, let's take a look at the stair tools themselves. Starting off with the Draw Stairs tool. This is essentially the freeform stair tool that allows you to manually draw a set of stairs. Like many tools in Chief Architect, there are essentially two modes, clicking and dragging. So, with the Draw Stair tool active, when I press down with the mouse button and move my mouse in any direction, a center line is drawn out from that point, and a staircase is created along that line. I can choose to draw as many or as few treads as I like, so this is useful if you're only going up a short distance to a landing or to a low platform. The downside of this, of course, is that I don't know exactly how many steps it will take to meet the floor above, so if I'm going up an entire flight to another floor, simply clicking with this tool will automatically place a set of stairs of the right height based on the standard riser heights and tread depths. Notice that stairs always draw in an upward direction, so basement stairs will need to be drawn down on the floor below to reach up to the main floor. The drawback with clicking to place stairs using the Draw Stairs tool is that it's hard to tell exactly how the stairs are going to be created. You won't see the stairs until they've been placed. I can anticipate in some instances. For example, if I click near a wall, it'll attach to the wall, and it defaults to build upward in a clockwise manner. However, if I click in the center of a room, I just get stairs building upward on my screen, and they may overrun nearby walls. So not seeing where they'll be building is less than ideal. In situations where I need a simple straight run of stairs, I want to use the Straight Stairs tool. 
It works very similar to draw stairs in terms of clicking to place a straight run of stairs, except that it shows you where the stair is going to be placed before you click to place it. And this is the same for the rest of the stairs tools. So you can see as I move my mouse around this room, an outline is displayed where and how the stairs are going to be generated. So I can avoid putting them somewhere that doesn't make any sense. Again, it defaults to drawing upward on my screen, or clockwise when attached to walls. This can be flipped around though by holding the Alt key on your keyboard, or Control if you're using a Mac. The curve left and curve right stairs work in the same manner. Simply select the one you want, then click to place it. The L-shaped and U-shaped stairs are a little special in that they have some specifications that can be set before they're placed. I'll get more into those in a moment, but just pressing OK here you can see that the general feedback we get is the same. As you move your mouse around the plan, you can see the stairs will rotate to fit appropriately into the corners, and I can control which direction they build by moving my mouse to one wall or the other. So in general, all of these tools work more or less the same. Simply select the tool, then click to place your stairs. But we all know the stairs are a little more complicated than that. For one, how do we know how many risers we need, or the height of those risers? Well, thankfully the program can, and by default will, automatically determine the best fit for us based on the room they're placed in. I've prepared a plan that has three different room areas, one with an 8 foot ceiling, one at 9 foot, and another at 10. And I have some cross-section cameras set up so we can see the structure of these rooms. You can see that when I place a straight stair along each wall, the program will automatically create the right size stair for each room. The automatic settings work when drawing stairs as well. I'm going to delete this section and switch to the Draw Stairs tool, and I'm just drawing a short set of stairs, which we can see here in the cross-section below. Now if I select the edit handle on either side to lengthen the stairs, once it gets near enough to the platform above, it automatically adjusts the rise and run in order to reach the next level. Now, of course, I'm just demonstrating. I don't expect you to have a cross-section open whenever you're drawing stairs. But if I press the Open Object button with the staircase selected, at the very top of the Staircase Specification dialog is some staircase information. This shows if it reaches the floor above or not, and if so, if it is determined to be steep or shallow based on its rise and run. It also gives some information about what the program considers to be the best fit for the given room height. In this 10 foot room for instance, it shows that a riser height of 6 and 11 sixteenths would require 20 total risers to reach the floor above, and I can see just below that that its current length I currently only have 17, being why it's saying it's steep, and if I had more than 20 it would report it being shallow. At the bottom of this information section is a Make Best Fit button, which will automatically apply these settings to create what is deemed to be the best fit for the room's height. Before pressing this button though, be sure that either Lock Top or Lock Bottom option is checked appropriately, as this will keep either the top or bottom tread in place while making these adjustments. You'll see in the preview that with the Lock Bottom option selected, when I press Make Best Fit, the top shifts to make this change. And down below, we'll see the riser height has changed to 6 and 11 sixteenths, and the tread is reporting 19, plus the top step to the platform, that's 20 total risers. The reason that the program is able to automatically detect and place stairs at the appropriate height is all because of the automatic treads and automatic heights advanced options, which we won't be exploring today as they're, well, advanced, but these will be covered in another webinar. Even with automatic options turned on, we can still manually input the length and width of the stairs. These can also be edited in the plan view as well. I'm going to jump back to my other plan so I have more room to demonstrate. When I select this staircase, there are a number of edit handles that appear. Earlier, I'd used the end handle to lengthen the stair. These can be used to change the length or the angle of the selected stair section. These small handles on the side act to change the width of the stair. In the center is a large square move handle, and floating off the end is a triangular rotate handle. So even if I use the straight stairs tool to place a set of stairs across the wall and is facing the wrong way, it's still easy enough to just select them and swing them around so they're facing the right way. Curved stairs are mostly the same. The side handles can still be used to change the width of the stairs, and the end handles can be used to lengthen or shorten the stair following the same arc path. However, it can also be used to change the overall length of the arc itself. The rotate handle is mostly the same here, except that it rotates the stair about the center of the arc, so the size and the radius of the arc will determine how this behaves. The move handle in the center is the same, however, be careful here because it's easy to grab the wrong handle by accident. An object's move handle is always going to be located in the center of the overall shape of the object, but in the very center of the arc itself is a small circular handle. This handle changes the arc's radius while locking the center point of the arc, and as such the size of the arc itself. And for stairs especially, this is potentially not very useful. Far more commonly, we'll want to keep the start and end points, or top and bottom treads, where they're at, while changing the arc's radius. 
For this, we'll use the small triangular handle near the end of the arc. A small side note here. By default, Chief Architect has enabled a series of snaps, which help keep objects drawn at good angles or aligned with other objects. But here, because we're more likely wanting to make small adjustments, and the line is going to try to snap onto its original location, it's more likely it'll end up with an annoying wiggly worm dance situation. Holding down the control key on your keyboard, or command if you're on a Mac, will temporarily disable those snaps, allowing for smoother adjustments. You can do this in all situations where objects are snapping or bumping into others, just be careful not to abuse this, as ultimately the snaps are there to help you. L-shape and U-shape stairs are pretty much the same. The only thing to note here is that these tools create multiple stair segments, and when you select a specific stair section, the edit handles only modify that one segment. The exception to this is the move handle. When moving one section, all connected pieces will stick together. If for any reason you need to move one section apart from the group, hold shift when clicking to select the stair, then it can be moved independently. A final point on L and U-shaped stairs. Selecting these tools causes a dialog to pop up, giving you a few options. First, whether or not you want to see this dialog when simply selecting these tools, or if you prefer to double-click the tool icon to access these settings. Next is the default direction you want the stairs to be drawn. This is only really useful in situations where there are no walls to direct the stairs how to behave. For example, leaving it selected on clockwise and pressing OK, you can see that if I were to place the stair in the middle of the room, it would be building in a clockwise direction. Though if I move my mouse into the corner, the direction is actually being dictated based on the wall my mouse is closest to. Not only that, but just like with the straight stairs before, if I press and hold my Alt key, or Control for Mac users, it forces the direction to change opposite of what the default direction was set to. So it's not a true direction setting, just a starting point. The other options in this dialog are to make winders, and for U-shaped stairs, how much of a gap to create between the two stair sections, and if the landing is going to be split or not. Winders, if you're unfamiliar with the term, are the wedge-shaped stairs that round corners, rather than a flat landing separating the stair sections. Checking this option and placing either a U-shape or L-shaped stair, you can see that the landing that was created before is now split into multiple treads. Keep in mind that both winders and split landings will act as risers and will shorten the overall length of the stairs when calculating best fit. Moving on to some more practical usage tips, when selecting any stair section, the edit toolbar at the bottom of your screen will display a few noteworthy stair functions. Starter tread, flare slash curve stair, break line, and auto stairwell. Selecting starter tread enables two sets of edit handles on the first two treads, allowing them to be extended outward and backward. Flare slash curve stair activates a series of handles. On both top and bottom ends, you'll see square handles on either corner, which allows you to flare out the corners. On the ends and either side are triangle handles. Similar to the curve stair, these triangular handles allow us to change the associated arc radius. For the side handles, we're adjusting the amount of flare made on either side, but on the front end, it's curving the treads. Again, holding the control or command key on your keyboard will be very useful here for more control over the curvature. Lastly, the diamond handles near the center control how far the flare will reach into the stair section. The brake line edit tool simply toggles on or off the brake line for this section of stair. The brake line is specified under the stair specification dialog, which I can access by pressing open object and looking at the brake line panel. Here, you can choose the style of brake line, the distance from the start, angle, etc. Last, though arguably the most important of these tools, is auto stairwell. This is the quickest way to create an opening to the floor above. Taking a quick camera view of these stairs, you can see that while they all reach the floor above, they don't actually allow access. The auto stair tool remedies this by creating a room on the floor above, the same shape as the selected staircase, and setting it to an open below room type, removing the floor platform in that area. So as you can expect, this tool won't work if there's not a defined room above. Before I wrap up this presentation, I want to cover how to create a walled-in stairwell to create a room underneath, like a closet or perhaps a staircase down to the floor below. Walls drawn across stairs will automatically be cut down to build underneath them. If you want to wall in the area below your stairs, you simply need to draw walls around the perimeter. However, walls have a primary side that they build from, so the direction that you draw them is important here. As you can see, if I draw a wall on the right side of this stair, drawing upward, the wall builds to the right, drawing downward, to the left so I can easily control whether my walls are building outside the stairs to contain them, or if they're building underneath my stairs. One really important tip here, though, is to not draw the walls past or across the bottom tread. The reason for this is that there's no room for the wall to be built there, so it builds on top of the stairs instead. 
So when you're trying to create a specific room area under your stairs, draw a wall under the second tread where the stringer meets the floor, and it will generate a very short wall separating the stairwell area from the rest of the room. Lastly, for sloped railing walls, simply use the straight half wall tool and draw along the side of the stairs, in this case drawing clockwise so that it builds on the outside of the stairs. Half walls are by default set to follow stairs, as you can see here, so they will automatically follow the same slope and take place of your railing that would otherwise be built there. Drawing a straight interior wall along the remaining section of wall, you can see that a wall railing is automatically generated along it, taking the place for the baluster railing. All right, there we go. So we're going to open up for a Q&A session at this point. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, raise your hand uh, over in the, um, the questions section. And uh, we're going to have Carrie um, start calling out people. And uh, do we have any questions uh, as of yet, Carrie? We do. We have a question from Jim. Hey, Jim, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, how to make a spiral staircase. It seems to change, alter the way that when I try to make the diameter small enough, uh, it cha changes other parameters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spiral staircases are uh, definitely a little bit more of a challenge, uh, you know, creating basically multi-segmented uh, curved stairs that kind of stick onto each other. Um, the uh, the main issue is that you kind of have to stack them onto each other. Um, and I know there's a couple different little tips and tricks and things that we can do. But uh, one of the biggest things with um, whoops with a uh, with staircases is they won't really wrap past that start point. So you kind of have to make like a half set and then you know copy and rotate them and kind of stack them so that they they totally fill the uh, the stair tool that Chief has. Uh, really isn't ideal for um, for the spiral. I think we just have a 3D symbol um, ultimately that we use uh, oh. in place of those. So um, I know there are a couple little tips and tricks and, and different ways of making them happen, uh, usually using like a copy paste type of, uh, of process. Um, I don't know if any of my colleagues have a, a, a quick sort of tip to, to throw in there, but um, it's, um, you know, it's usually a, a semi-complicated process to get it to work yeah, with those tools. Let's try You want to try something? Make that uh, halfway again. This is Al. Make that halfway staircase you just did. And the half, and the, that, so you make that out of a straight stair, not a curved stair. Yeah, the, um, I didn't really cover this part of it in, um, in that, but if you take a straight stair segment, and um, when you take the end, it changes the angle, like I showed. If you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard or um, right mouse button, um, it'll it'll uh, change that into a curve. So I can take any straight segment and and just start curving it at any point. So I can kind of wrap it back into itself. Uh, the stairs you're going to find they go about 345 to 350 degrees before they distort. If you mm -hmm. take that first one and copy it and rotate it and hook and hook it up, then you can drag the second staircase. Yep. And you can get them to wrap and spiral up. Yeah, so once the, uh, the top of one stair segment hits the bottom of another one, it'll just automatically sort of connect and it just becomes a second stair. So mm -hmm. working in, in halves, like I was saying, is, is kind of your best bet for that. Okay. Um, so pretty much just start with the first section, uh, you know, get the right height and, uh, and depth and all that, kind of set that part up and then copy it and rotate it. Uh, because the rotate handle rotates about the, the center of it, it kind of makes it easy. You can just take that starting point and then just wrap it back around itself. Uh, but then, yeah, you just kind of keep on copying and pasting and going from there. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our next question is from Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey there. Um, this is really about the, uh, what I guess in the manual, uh, the online manual, it's called partial railings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it seems like the, the you know, I, I followed all the stuff. It's not that it doesn't do it. It just doesn't do it. Um, it doesn't want to infill the, the, the little bit of exposed stair very nicely with the wall. And so what I ended up kind of cheating it as is kind of putting a polyline solid triangle and, and drawing a, you know, some a, a baseboard polyline in front of it to kind of mm -hmm. mimic it. 
is there any better you know again following the the stuff that's in the, the quote unquote manual you know does get you there basically to have like in your picture that's shown as opposed to that um solid railing have the balustrade railing that dies into the into the solid wall with the exposed treads okay so you're talking about um pretty much any of these sort of transitionary kind of points correct yeah that you would have a, a balustrade you'd have open treads um out to that room and then you would have the balustrade that would die up into that full height wall but it seems like again in the methodology that you know chief is telling me to do you know it's about creating winders out of the solid run stairs moving it over with you know taking off my snaps and things like that um mm -hmm. and it works again not a real elegant way um but it because of everything that's below that stair system you know it's just getting infilled with a solid wall not a solid wall but the the stair material below it you know whatever you want to call it when you say not open below um oh, sure you know it doesn't really make a nice it, it doesn't the wall will automatically fill in there and so again what i've done is just sort of popped a little polyline solid into it uh, and and redraw the baseboard in front of it and you know made the polyline solid basically drywall um mm -hmm. but i'm just wondering if there's any better way you know this is again the, the same methodology that's been done since like i don't know version six you know we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're pretty far down the line to not have any better answer yeah, and, and some of what you mentioned there um, kind of touches on the um, that open object. Let me delete some of these things out of here. Um, so that when you have that stair, um, if you undo the open underneath, it uh, it kind of fills in that space, like you were saying. Um, I find that to be less than ideal uh, myself, you know, for a number of reasons. Uh, for one, it's not an actual wall at all. Uh, there's no framing or anything, you know, important going on there. Uh, it's uh, not following, you know, any of the sort of wall criteria of, uh, you know, molding or anything else like that. Um, so, yeah, I don't really like that option myself. Um, I find it's much, much better to to wall them in, uh, like I did here, either, you know, drawing the walls directly underneath um, or uh, kind of framing them out. Um, that way I actually have, you know, defined room areas. Um, when but, you have a uh, partial railing, it doesn't allow you to to do that though that's the mm -hmm. the major difference right so when you have um, any sort of a railing happening there um let me see if i can kind of simulate this because mm, well i don't know if i can really can quickly um yeah the railing transitions um they can always be a little bit of a pain and i think the next webinar that talks about um, multi-segments. I think he gets a little bit more into railings, so um, okay. might well, just touch base on this. I'll ask you. To, I'll ask you next week. Yeah, because some of these, like the railing transitions and things, they can kind of help a little bit, but um, but yeah, in certain situations, they just don't really like if it's you know if the railing hits the end of a wall and then it can, it's supposed to like kind of wrap around it or something. Um, there's certain things that that there's just limitations on. Okay. Um, Thanks. Taylor, our next question is from Gil. Hi, Gil. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Taylor. Uh, yeah, I have a client who um, has got a, well, it's not a really unique stair um, uh, design he wants to do. Basically, um, what it is is that we would be starting off the first two treads, um, like one would be uh, six feet wide, and then the, the next one would be Four feet wide, or four and a half, and then would go come up to a to a you know four foot landing, and I just can't seem to get Chief to allow me to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the things you'll definitely notice that uh, you know all the stairs they have to just be you know they're all the same width. Uh, we only yes. have one you know width section in there, um, and even if you draw multiple sections. So I've got kind of section one and section two, they're, they're technically connected here. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the width overall, it just wants to keep them the same. Um, so there's a couple of different ways of, um, of managing that. 
um, often what I find, and again, kind of goes into goes beyond stair basics per se. Mm -hmm. But um, there's uh, some of these. Um, the option here, there's like the max tread contraction, um, and that's one way of of sort of forcing it to to contract around certain areas. Um, mm -hmm. And um, there's depending on um, on how things are set up. If you have uh, like a wall that's kind of framing things in, uh, that's causing that to to jut in. Um, that's kind of how you control that. Uh, if it's just sort of freely out there, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, oftentimes I'll draw in um, like invisible walls or something just to, to frame it in and kind of use that same um, option. Um, okay. I don't know if, um, I don't know, Al, have you run into to that or, or had uh, have any tips on that specifically? Um, I think uh, the latest, I think at 12, you can you can have a staircase that splits thicknesses. Like, like you can, if you want one set of set stairs to be slightly smaller running up between walls, if you were to put one set of stairs in and then another that's disconnected, change the width and then reconnect them, they should stay. Yeah, they, okay. uh, they, they tend to like to merge together and... See yeah, snapped. that's what I, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm looking for right there. All right, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, is that doable? <laughs> I'm still on uh, on 11. I don't know whether 11 does that. I think this might be I 12. I don't believe so, no. Okay. So that's, um, yeah, that's a, an interesting way of making it happen. Um, you basically have to force them to connect. Um, one useful tool there that uh, I did not mention um, during that is if you do need to move things that are kind of separated out like that, um, sometimes it can be kind of hard. Like you saw when I'm trying to like get them to move together, they they kind of bump and they don't really have an actual like legit snap. So mm -hmm. um, using the point to point move tool down on my edit toolbar down here, uh, that helps mm -hmm. out a ton. Uh, so if I you know widen one out, change the size or whatever, you know the corners may not line up. But I can simply just grab one and move from point A to point B, and uh, and just snap them right onto each other. Okay. So that way I can just make sure that they go right on each other perfectly, and then mm -hmm. once they're connected, then they should kind of move together. Okay. Yeah, I I actually did, tried that um, eleven, and what it mm -hmm. it didn't um, it kept the the widths different, but. Um, mm -hmm the second set of stairs is like below the first one. So I think it would, right. now it would, have, it would have to adjust or uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll play with it until I yeah. get. Yeah, oh, they think yeah. previously they, they wouldn't actually connect and merge and become one stair segment. They were just two totally independent things, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, well, other, other than that, I guess I could do like a, a polyline, right? Um, mm -hmm. polyline yeah, solids. I think so. Yeah, what I'd used to do in the past, in, and I haven't had to do it in a long time now, but um, if you just draw in basically like custom, essentially custom treads as landings, um, it's kind mm -hmm. of a corny way of getting around it, but it, it definitely works. So if you have like just okay. a couple landings and then the stairs that move up from there, uh, that'll definitely work. Okay, yeah, that's, a, yeah, I never thought about that, but okay. Well, that thank you very much for the information. All right, no problem, thank you. Taylor, we had Cody write in, and they were wondering if you could demonstrate how to create a platform in a room with stairs. For example, you have a main floor, and the kitchen is raised up from there with a couple of stairs leading up to it. Oh, sure. Yeah, let me uh, let me clear out some of these. I'll just clear out all of them, actually. Uh, so probably the easiest and most common kind of scenario there is if you just have a, a separation between two rooms. And we'll just raise this one. Let's just give it a six inch. No, let's do higher than that. Let's bring that up by 12 inches. So the really nice thing about the um, the stair tools is if just using my draw stairs, you know, I can draw in whatever stairs I want. Um, and if I know how many stairs I need, I can just draw them in manually. Uh, but um, just clicking near the edge of a wall, if there's a platform difference, or if I'm doing like an exterior, um, and then there's terrain down below. Um, it'll automatically just figure out how many steps I need. So it'll just put that in there just by clicking right next to that wall. So if I had a much more drastic scenario here where this was 
let's say 35 inches, why not? And then I click, it'll automatically just determine how many stairs I need. So that's by far the simplest way. Um, so if there's steps from like a garage into, into the main house, uh, from a you know, mezzanine down or balcony or something like that, um, really easy, you just click right next to the wall and that'll just automatically calculate it for us. All right, great. We have a question from Eugene. Hi, Eugene, go ahead and ask your question. On the original picture, there's a window beside the stairs. Is that window automatically tempered? Oh, on um, on this thing here? Yeah, that window on the left-hand side, is that a tempered window? Um, that's a good question. Um, I would assume that it is. Uh, I'm not entirely sure on that, though. It's required by code, but I want to make sure that it's making it a tempered window. Hmm. Yeah, I, I believe that it would be. I I want to say that they are by default, um, but um, a lot of that depends on just the materials of the actual, uh, you know, the uh, the window itself. Um, and yeah, I think it wouldn't be, but um, but yeah, you've got um, options in there where we can just force it and say, hey, yeah, this is a, a tempered glass window. So um, it may not do it automatically. We, right, we need to force it, in other words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe you, you probably would have to. I would assume so. Okay. Taylor, our next question comes from Graham Camp. Hi, Graham, go ahead and ask your question. Um, okay, so I have a similar question to the, um, the, the different levels of floors. Um, in my case, the stairs um, extend from one platform through the wall uh, up to the second floor. So basically, if you took your uh, if you took your four risers and treads there and you centered it over the wall um, oh, okay. over that lower yeah yeah just like that so i have a situation like this and then um, the opening is uh, like an arched doorway so when i when i move the stairs into the arched doorway that i already have drawn um it eliminates the arch above it and it just uh creates like a square opening up to the up to the ceiling i'm just wondering if there's a way to like draw the stairs like this and maintain the arch door doorway above it. Mm -hmm. Well, so I guess the first thing on this is that um, if I have a wall passing through it, then um, I'm pretty much always going to have this kind of scenario. So um, I wouldn't want, well, I would need to make sure that that room kind of extends into that area. So, you know, I would go through and, and kind of break this up and uh, kind of change all around the lower stairs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that whole platform area needs to to kind of exist to encapsulate the stair um, and then it'll reach up and then it hits that platform. So really we're just pushing that platform back. And as long as I have a full wall at the top of the stair, um, then that shouldn't be a problem. Um, if it is a any kind of a half wall or railing or anything other than a standard wall, um, then it creates it automatically creates a doorway in that space. Uh, and a doorway and a railing uh, or half wall, um, it just chops all the way through, um, all the way to the ceiling. But if this is a solid wall, uh, then it'll accept um, any kind of doorway or, or door that we have in there. So, okay. Is, is there something I need to change in the settings of the uh, stair tool? Uh, uh, to change the doorway? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so um, I've kind of got, I've gotten as far as uh, as you've drawn. Um, I have a I have a full wall uh, that extends from the lower platform up to the ceiling heights, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then, yeah, like I said. So when I as soon as I draw in in the stairs through the opening, I lose I lose the arched opening. So I'm just wondering if there's if there's uh, it just squares it off. It doesn't. I haven't figured out at least how to how to maintain that arch above uh, above the stairs. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's take a quick look. So these are all going up to um, to just standard walls, right? Mm -hmm. And then you've got a uh, an arched doorway. Oops, at the top of this. Yeah. Uh, the arch is in line with the with the lower wall there. It's um, that makes a difference. Oh, I see. So the arch is actually coming across from essentially exactly. from the wall. Yes, okay. correct. Yep. Um, 
tricky one. Yeah. It's a it's an as built plan, so it's. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably have to play with that a little bit. Um, in a pinch, in my kind of knee jerk reaction, just to like get it over and done with, um, would be probably just to put a curved polyline solid in there. But okay. to actually put a an actual curved doorway, it'd be a little bit tricky because um, you know that wall doesn't technically want to exist there. Um, I'd have to play with it and see if it actually would make it work. But yeah, I'd probably just put some sort of a curved object in there and just and just call it a day. Um, okay. Especially yeah. if I don't have to frame it in. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. All right. Let's check in with Wilson. Hi, Wilson. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Taylor. How are you? Hi, Wilson. Good. Okay. I have two questions. Can you please show me that uh, half wall which you drawn earlier near the stair? Yeah. You had a full boulder, then you had uh, shown like a half wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a, a couple of different ways for those. Let me just draw one over here. So with the straight half wall tool, uh, we don't have to really do anything special to them. They just kind of work uh, automatically for us. So as long as you draw them on the outside of that wall, oh. it'll just automatically follow the exact slope of that of that stair. But if the then the, then the wall is continuing full after that, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Yep, and then I just did another um, straight interior wall. So a full straight oh. wall or a straight interior wall, it'll just go yeah. floor to ceiling. Uh, but the half wall, it'll automatically be set to the uh, the slope there. But it's going to follow the stair. So even if I change the stair and make it really steep or really uh, shallow, you know, whatever the pitch of that stair is, uh, that uh, that top run will, will follow that same. Um, you will notice that uh, if you do that with a camera view open, the uh, the railing stays on there until something else changes on the plan. So, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just opening something and hitting OK or making some other action happen will make that kind of refresh and go away. But okay. Yep. Do you mind to go to the uh, initial image what you, what you had the in the presentation? Uh, like this one you had the video? yeah this one yeah. Okay, yeah. I have one of the similar situation for as well condition. So okay. to to the right, the, there's a stair going down to the basement, and from here, from here, it's, but it's it's uh, the other way around. But anyway, there's mm -hmm. the first floor, the, the the skirt stair is going up. So I don't know how I can do that with this wall. I was trying, I had uh, some tough time to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the curves are always a little interesting and challenging. Um, one of the uh, the big things. Let me see if I can kind of emulate what we've got there. Um, so we kind of have a, a bit of a curve scenario there. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll put a wall across the side and I'll, we'll do it underneath. So with a straight stair or a straight wall here, um, I can change that to an arc down at the bottom here. So yeah. I, I never draw in with the uh, the uh, the arc wall tool um, it just usually makes things more okay. complicated. Yeah. Um, so I'll try to just align it here, and then I'll change that to an arc. And I should be able to just snap that right to the stair. Okay. So as long as the front and end end or the start and end of that wall uh, line up appropriately, then I should be kind of in business. So once I have this this kind of collection um, set up here, and I'll probably have a wall in the back with a door going down and all that stuff. Um, I would probably just copy this and paste the exact same stair down in the basement um, just to make sure that they're fully, totally aligned. Uh, and no, um, it's, it's the other way around, like from the right side is going down to the basement. Oh, sure. Yeah. So. Um, oh, and we can actually flip these around um, once they've been placed. Um, so I showed when placing them, um, you know, you can hold down the Alt key and I can flip it and go the other direction. Yeah. Once it's been placed, if I select that, then down at the bottom, there's this reverse direction button. Yeah. If I hit that, then it flips it and, and it goes the other direction. Okay. So, yeah, so, I, okay. So, so here, so now from in the left, there's a stair going down to the basement, which is a sta straight stair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, for some reason, my this stair was interfering with the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is a similar, exactly. This is the situation here. Okay, so at this point, and I don't even have a, um, I don't have a, a foundation or a basement yeah. built here. Yeah. But um, at that point, I would go down to the uh, the floor below. Uh, the main thing is just making sure that I have that alignment of the uh, of the wall um, downstairs, yeah. and um, and then basically just build the stair coming up to that point. 
um, in this plan, probably don't have enough clearance to really make a stair work there. But um, yeah, as long as there's a, a wall there and it connects, uh, the main thing though is kind of making sure that I have a, um, a defined room that that allows that to just be, you know, a stairwell. So mm -hmm. I'd probably set this as um, as an open below or, you know, do something like that where this is basically an opening down to the uh, the floor below. And then when I go down to my basement and I set those stairs, as long as they attach to that wall, then it should just work um, and they'll be automatically put a, a door in there as well. So, okay. One one last question. When when you do this actual stair, sorry, the riser count for as built stair, do mm -hmm. you don't count the last riser which is the next platform, right? Uh, you mean the very top riser? Yeah. Do we count? Um, <laughs> it it in a way kind of does and doesn't. Um, so the program here, like it'll show there's there's sixteen risers. So it's it's adding that final step up. Um, the number of treads in the actual staircase is one less than that. So the stairs themselves say, I have this number, but overall I have one more than that for that final riser. Um, we can kind of see two, um, there is, yeah, there should be a uh, nosing at top. There we go. So the riser surface at top landing, that's what I'm looking for. So that kind of shows us that very last step. Um, it doesn't technically you know, put it in, uh, okay. on that but you know if we turn these on then that kind of shows that there's there's one more step in that so that will be the next floor right right next floor. Floor. Okay. okay exactly okay so in in, in your stair dialog I, I let's say if you have 15 15 to the next floor i, I should enter like 14 into the stair dialog box right mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah so like this one it always shows the number of risers is going to be one more than the treads available okay all right thank you yep all right thank you Taylor, we had Kelly write in, and they were wondering if you could demonstrate how to adjust the slope of the stairs. Um, yeah, so let me jump over to this stair here. So the um, the actual slope itself, like it shows the the rise angle here. Uh, we don't really have control over the the specific angle of it, but it's really all just about the uh, the rise and run. So the number of treads. And, um, and the riser height. Uh, didn't really cover it too much on this because it's kind of just taking away from the, uh, the advanced options and the automatic treads, but um, we can go through these and specify um, if we know the exact number of, uh, of steps that are involved or uh, the exact uh, depth of those treads, uh, we can punch that in. So if we're doing like an as-built condition um, and we've measured the exact rise and the exact run, um, I can put in the tread depth here and then if I uncheck automatic heights, then I can just plug in those exact riser heights. So if I'm actually measuring an existing set of stairs, I will just plug in exactly those numbers and just make that exact set of stairs. Uh, and as long as everything's you know, dimensioned right and my ceiling heights are, are correct and everything, then it should just manually uh, you know, reach at that point. Uh, once we start doing that though, it, um, it kind of changes all this stuff. We can't do make best fit, as it says here, the start and end. Uh, the heights are, are set manually. So it uh, kind of just takes away from all that automation and just says, hey, you're just doing your own thing now. So. All right, great. We have right. a question from Renisha. Hi, Renisha, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, I am wondering if you can demonstrate um, placing the railing with a larger newel post, like in the mm -hmm. picture. Um, I drew a stairs with I wanted a larger little post and I used a pony wall and um, the railing tool and mm -hmm. it kept putting the new post on the pony wall and I didn't want it there. I just didn't know which way to go to. Mm, okay. So, well, you said you're, you're doing a half wall. Um, was it a half, like a half wall with railing on top kind of a scenario? Yes. Okay. So for yeah, for those it's um it's going to kind of stack them. So you know if I do a, a half wall, and uh, we'll do a railing on top. Let me turn railing. So those are just automatically going to be stacked one on top of another. And oops. 
So if I control, if I change the size of these, uh, there, there is kind of a, a potential offset that I can play with that. But uh, generally speaking, they're just going to be perfectly aligned on top of one another. Uh, so um, if I'm not entirely understanding where or how, how exactly were you wanting to get that set up? Um, I want the, the newel post on the floor level and then um, a solid wall going up several stairs to and then to a full height wall. I can... mm -hmm. Okay, so this post essentially would be going all the way down and then the wall starting beyond that? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, there really isn't going to be a way of doing that within this wall setting or this wall configuration. Um, I'd probably have to back that off and start the rail a little bit shy and um, and probably just manually place a post because uh, this this tool here is kind of treating these as two different walls and um, so it's they can't really go through one another. Uh, so in this kind of scenario, uh, I guess if I didn't need uh, any sort of newels in between, uh, you know, I'd probably just kind of remove the uh, the newels altogether, and uh, and just have the balusters themselves, and then just manually place a post on the end. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know if there's a really a, a better or cleaner way to win it from there, honestly. Can you show us how the curve stairs in the picture on the? When you started, how how they are how the railing is done in that. Mm -hmm. Um. So this plan, it's not my plan, so I don't know for sure. But I am going to uh, to give a, a solid guess that this is probably just a, a manually placed column uh, that uh, that is just a, a separate entity that was placed in there. So I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bet that that is not part of the actual uh, stair uh, railing itself. There, uh, there may be a stair newel in there, but um, but typically with those kind of scenarios, um, if if we have the same kind of post up on top, uh, then that totally could work. Uh, but it's uh, really a matter of going into the newels uh, or the um, yeah newels and balusters, and then uh, we can just choose a different newel post um, style. Oops, my thing's in the way. There it is. Um, so I can browse out and and grab some uh, you know some column or something to replace that null post with. Um, so there's a couple different ways of uh, of doing that or different things that I can replace that with, but um, it basically just replaces all null posts. Uh, and in this case, like the staircase that I have, we're going to have you know up to three of them. Um, but um, I'd probably just change that spacing out. Um, but for that picture. Um, to, to get the exact placement and angle and everything, um, I probably would have just placed it manually, just uncheck the newels and and just grab one of those columns from the library and just put it in there myself. Okay, thank you. All right. Taylor, we had uh, Frank write in a question. He's wanting to create two stair sections that are separated with a landing, but each of the stair sections would have different properties. Can you demonstrate how he can achieve that? Sure thing. So let me close that out. So Frank, what you'd want to do, there's um, and it's kind of a couple um, layers of, uh, of things going on there. So uh, when we draw in a, um, a staircase, um, I can either manually draw in a, a landing and then draw another section, um, and then it'll just kind of automatically click together. Um, or if I draw in both sections and just leave a blank space there, uh, when I click between them, it without changing my, my tool at all, just using the draw stairs tool, it automatically creates a landing of that same size. So um, it just kind of automatically makes it work. Um, and you can make some uh, L-shaped stairs and U-shaped stairs that same way. Uh, so it makes that pretty handy uh, using those landings. Then uh, you really don't have to use the landing tool at all unless you're doing like a custom shaped landing. Uh, but at that point, once they're uh, they're all together and uh, and connected, when I select and open this up, there's two sections. So section one and section two. Uh, right now I'm, I'm on section two, this upper portion. So at this point, uh, just like before, just like I'm changing a, a solid or a single railing or a, 
uh, single staircase, I can set you know the number of treads. I can set the the heights uh, manually. Uh, I can do you know whatever I need to do here. So um, if they're going to be different at all, then uh, I'll just open up that one section, be sure which section I'm I'm looking at. Uh, when I double click or hit open object on either one of these, it pre-selects that section. So I kind of just know where I'm at based on that. Um, and you can also tell when you select a staircase that has multiple sections, it'll show there's a little number one here and a little number two here. Um, if I had like three or four segments in there, then we'd have one of those numbers on each one of those. So hopefully that answers your question there, Frank. All right, thanks. We have a question from Vicki Lister. Hey, Vicki, what is your question? People that want um, the, the freestanding stairs, you know, with the single, like a steel stringer underneath. And <laughs> what I've been doing to show that is just when I select the stringers, just select a stringer and give it some sort of material, but it's hard to specific, specifically say, okay, this is a steel beam, you know, like an I-beam or something. It, it just mm -hmm. kind of turns out solid. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if there's a, an easier way to, to determine what that single stringer would be. Um, not really, unfortunately, because the, um, the stringers themselves, they're just, they're kind of just pre-programmed to be well, pretty much exactly what we're seeing here. It's just this general yeah. shape. Uh, you know, we can change, you know, how many we have and the kind of general configuration um, and then mm -hmm. the material. Uh, but whatever material we choose here for the stringer, it's it's just going to be replacing this. Um, so it's kind yeah. of just assuming that it's going to be, um, you know, a wood, you know, cut out stringer for that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we can make it, you know, steel or whatever else, but it'll, it'll still just it's be still that general like shape. A, it's still going to look like wood beam. Um, just a different color, <laughs> a different yeah. material. More or less, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Taylor, we have Tim Schrock. Hi, Tim. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hey, about half of my questions have already been answered, so that's great. Um, <laughs> second, my, my question now comes to the uh, handrail returns. I'm mm -hmm. looking at my Rails tab. And right now, handrail at wall options is grayed out. I, I can't select those and i'm not sure what i'm missing to to change that mm. you're talking on the, the these guys here the railing at wall no in the rails tab down at the bottom oh those guys um you know i don't know off the top of my head um i think dermot if you're out there probably has a better idea of what activates those. Um, I think there's something specific that we have to do for those. Well, I'm assuming you're right, still on, on the top, top rail. Ah, uh, so we have to select one of these. Okay. You can only do a return for the top rail. So you uh, have to select the top rail first, and then you can do it. And it will work better if you actually have a stair that's against a wall. Yeah, probably would. Yeah, that makes sense. So most of these things, uh, everything from really here down is all specific to whatever rail you have selected. That makes sense. What about um, instead of a curved return, can I make that a 45? No. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. That answers that. Thank you. All right, we have a question from Maria. Hi, Maria, go ahead and ask your question. Hi, Taylor, can you hear me? I can. Okay, cool, thanks. Hi, um, you showed at the beginning an example of how to build a um, 90 degree turn with the mm -hmm. stairs. And you used uh, walls that create an inside angle. So what if this angle was an outside angle and you had to create the stairs that turn approximately in the middle, uh, 90 degree, and you create a winder in between. So my challenge with that was to control the number of steps in that uh, turning 
uh, turning section. And that was one challenge. And second challenge, I needed to create a closed space underneath. And uh, that uh, section that creates the turn, okay, uh, needs to be on a narrow angle, is supposed to following uh, with uh, like each step was a separate section of the wall. So as soon as I uh, try to force it with a wall, like if I draw the wall um, separately, try to force it to go on the narrow angle, it um, basically uh, uh, what it does, it goes either under my steps or it forces the steps to become one step as opposed to two or three. Hmm. Yeah, and that's, um, I mean, some of that's the complications just with uh, with winders, um, kind of in, in a general sense. Um, winders are are interesting, um, but uh, so it sounds to... like, uh, if, if I'm understanding correctly, it sounds like we've got a, uh, like a section of winders where, number one, you were saying, um, just controlling how many steps you have going around, whether it's two or three or, or however many. Um, and, right. and, your, uh -huh. and your wall is inside. Uh, you probably understood me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've, so we've got a wall um, underneath this whole section, right? No. The, uh, uh, right now, you're still using the uh, uh, two walls that create an inner uh, angle. So now imagine it's outer angle. So the angle, do you see your mouse? That's mm -hmm. where the wall is. And there is no wall. It's open space on the other side. Hmm. Yeah. So the trouble with winders in a, in a general sense is that they, it'll, it'll try to build out to kind of the nearest wall uh, whenever and wherever it can. So, you know, you're going to get some kind of weird behavior sometimes yeah. if things aren't really like snapped up properly. Yeah. Uh, and on the inside, it's going to try to, to reach out because ultimately what um, what checking this winders option means is basically telling the stair just to reach out to the nearest wall. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not just clearly or, uh, uh, you know, explicitly creating a, a set of winders. Uh, you know, if that uh, if that staircase is pulled away from the wall far enough, <laughs> farther, uh, then it'll just wrap around. But uh, you know, once it, once it actually reaches that wall, then it's going to jump out and, and hit that wall. So having any sort of walls on the inside um, that can get a little bit tricky and potentially messy, depending on what we're trying to do. Um, you know, I I hate to say that um, because winders can be a little bit um, a little difficult because of that. Um, sometimes it's sometimes it's good to to default back to uh, to just manually taking control of them and and just drawing them in. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, with another suggestion of drawing them in with landings. Uh, you know, it's not the cleanest and it's not ideal in a lot of cases. Uh, but landings will automatically connect and uh, their riser height changes and their height changes automatically to basically simulate another tread. So, you know, if I had some kind of situation that the winders are just absolutely not working for, um, it's kind of a, it, it's a fine solution um, to basically just select that, uh, that middle section, you know, get that out of there, just draw the, uh, the bottom, the top, and then just manually draw in those, uh, those sections. So, How would you uh, manually I'm, draw those sections to connect them together? Um, just using the landing tool. Um, so, like, if I wanted to, you know, one up here, of course, it's not Again, pretty... you're using a very easy situation with the mm -hmm. inside um, a corner. That's not really a big deal. It's very easy to build. So, my um, question was about the outside angle. Do I not explain myself clear about the outside angle? Um, yeah, I'm not sure if your I... Is, your, your angle is inside angle. The wall creates inside angle. And now, imagine you're wrapping your stairs around uh, the walls, right? 
around the walls that create an outside angle. Right. So, and you're talking about just having the walls, not those kind of walls. Um, if you if you just put it in the middle of the room, put some kind of I don't know, like a um a, a shaft for a uh for an elevator, for example, and I need to wrap the stairs around this elevator. Yep, just like that. Okay. Exactly. And the, here's your walls. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. How do I do that? Yeah, now it's exactly what I'm asking. Right. So for the, the winders, it's still going to be uh, a little bit challenging, especially on that inner corner, uh, because if, you know, I'll probably have to just redraw these. Uh, if we draw it at that tight of an angle, you know, so it actually meets right at the corner and this sort of winder section meets perfectly, it's only going to give me two steps. Um, so that's sort of challenge number one. Uh, okay. If I needed to have three perfect. steps or... Yeah. Hey, Lou, may I make a suggestion? Yeah. So in an outside <clears throat> situation like this, I probably would not use the winder tool. And in fact, there's a lot of situations where I would not use the winder tool. If you start out with the L-shaped tool with the winders option, you could probably place it there and then you can edit your landings to be any shape you want. And and I think you would have more success because you can add extra winders uh, uh, landings there. You can split those up. You can stretch them. You can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's essentially what this is doing. Is that instead of um, instead of actually creating winders, this this says make winders, but. Uh, what it's actually doing is just taking that one landing and just splitting it down the middle and creating this sort of split landing scenario. Uh, so if you can see down at the bottom, it actually shows this this is a a landing object that it's made. So uh, and that kind of goes with what I was saying. Like if I'm looking at this and I think, well, this is great or it's close, but I need to have like three steps around that corner rather than just the two, uh, then I would come in here and modify these and um, and just draw in a new landing in the middle there uh, it can be a little tough because they always draw in as you know square shapes but you know i would just shape that out to fit within that space and uh, and just make my own landing stair and once they're all connected in assuming they actually click in there well then uh, they'll they'll kind of all just automatically merge and just become steps so it can be a little bit tricky, um, you know, breaking them up and making them essentially manually drawing in stairs. Uh, but the landing tool is uh, is really good for that because uh, they they just automatically connect, you know, one to the next and and kind of create a, a stair as you go. So it's kind of a way of of manually drawing in your own stairs. Okay, I'll play with it. Thank you very much. All right, All right. no problem, Mary. Taylor, we have a question from Siobhan. Hi, Siobhan, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, I was curious on how to create a stair with newels that go from the stair to the ceiling. Like modern, all of the newels just go straight from the stair bottom to the ceiling. Sure. Um, so in the actual stair itself, um, you know, the uh, the railing tools we are kind of limited. Uh, in, uh, in a lot of cases, if um, if the stair railings that we create here are not ideal or not what we're really looking for, uh, we can just get rid of them. And uh, I believe that we should be able to, um, with a manual straight railing, we can set that to follow stairs. Um, and this gives us more control over what these stairs really do. And um, we should be able to do a post to ceiling, though I don't know if that does. Yeah. I would expect that. Um, so they're not really designed to be able to do that. Um, you know, if um, if this was coming up to some other, um, you know, railing or beam, or if it was tying into another railing or something, then uh, kind of cover that up. But um, that would be the closest just immediately within the actual stair 
tools themselves. Uh, that's kind of how that's going to work out. So I would probably, though, uh, you know, knowing that it's going to do that, I would just take off the newels and uh, and just manually place in vertical posts um, just so that they actually stop at the ceiling itself because uh, they okay. just don't really know just actually stop right at that ceiling. Okay. Oh. So, ju so just place manual posts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the, uh, the posts themselves, I mean, once they're in there, um, we can set whatever size they're going to be, but we can specify yeah. their top and bottoms and yeah, I would just kind of put them up the run and then go from there. Okay. Thank you. Taylor, we had Peyton right in. She has two questions. The first okay. is that she missed your demonstration of showing the corner um, winder. Oh, okay. If you could show that real quick. And then after that, her second question is, is there a way to take the railing off the last two steps? Mm, we have to... Not directly. Um, so let me show the the, uh, the winder first. So uh, when creating the winders, uh, if we're doing it manually, uh, when you draw in two different sections of stairs, so we've got section one one and one two. It's kind of all the same run, but we've got a second section at the top. Uh, if I zoom in so I can grab that handle, uh, hold down my Alt key, then I can curve that top section and then continue off the rest of it, put that in the corner, and then if I open this up and check winders, then it'll automatically create that winder scenario. Uh, what I showed earlier in the presentation, though, was simply just using the, the L-shaped stair and then just checking this make winders option, and that'll automatically create the winders of that shape. Great. So um, as far as removing the railings from um, just like the top or bottom set, um, there, I don't think there's really actually a good way unless, and honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I have not tested this, oops. Um, but the method that uh, kind of like what Al was talking about earlier, if we remove the railings and then join them together, yeah, that works. So I guess that's how. Okay. Uh, so as long as we draw them separate from one another and then attach them, then it uh, they kind of attach but remain independently defined. Perfect. Thank you. And our mm -hmm. last question comes from Kareem. Hi, Kareem. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Thanks for the presentation, guys. I have a few questions. Okay. Um, one, how do I get to show newels at the top of the, at the landing? and the transitions between those two two staircases so when it gets to the landing you know i generally i do not get you know two mules there to have a transition between the two steps and two uh external staircases i cannot see is there a way to show for you to see them on in plan view from the second floor if mm -hmm. you start created them on the first floor mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay go ahead oh, no, um, i was going to say that particular answer is uh, is pretty easy because uh, ultimately no there isn't um if oh, you're wow. on the floor above uh, oops and on the plan view um, if i'm on the floor above and I have a stairwell um mm -hmm. then what that's doing is basically creating that open below room area um, and in that condition it will show me what's downstairs uh, but outside it won't. So the the short answer is no, it just it's just not going to show you any stairs that happen down here. Uh, but there's a couple of different ways. Um, you know if if you were able to make an open below room area out there, um, then that would do it. Um, a lot of people just kind of just do a like a CAD detail just showing that it's there though. Uh, but um, yeah, there, there currently isn't a good way of just making it immediately happen. Okay. Um, okay, then you all. So as far as the uh, the connection here, so you're talking about um, it's kind of a transition between yeah. these two here. Yeah, yeah. But you have like a U-shaped stair instead. So okay. both staircases are, you know, so there's a gap in between the two staircases.
Okay. Yeah. And so there's, I know there's a couple different options in here for, um, for just the railing transitions and smooth transitions. Mm -hmm. So that kind of changes the way that these transitions function. Uh, so as far as just the built-in transition, uh, that's pretty much the option that we have. Um, so it'll create the transition and then smooth will will create that that arc between. Uh, but um, really, I mean, it's basically just taking this tiny little railing edge on that landing and then just making a transition to the the railing edge of the uh, of the stair. Uh, so I mean, that's essentially how you would create those. Uh, but um, was there kind of a different type of of transition that you were looking for, or yeah, yeah. Um, what I wanted was to get like new, like you have a new like, starting stairs, and then one at the top of the landing, and then one at the end of the stairs on the, on the next floor. You know, so so you'd have them every the start and end of every stair section, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, so you'd have them. You know, the the the, the, the first stick is from the ground to the landing. You'd have one at the start, one at the end. Then at, when the landing comes around and transitions, you have a new one again at the, the, from the landing to where the new staircase starts, and then one at the end, at the top, at the, at the second floor. Mm. Oh, looks like you have, OK. Yeah, because the new one should be starting at uh, start and end of really of each segment. OK. Uh, yeah, how do you get that done? <laughs> Um, it should just do it automatically. The um, the thing oh. that we weren't really seeing in there was the uh, the default newels. They're only like two inches, uh, so they um, they kind of just don't really jump out very much. Um, oh. But uh, but changing the the newel size or uh, or type of newel. So mm -hmm. if I you know, grab some other type of newel or something, um, then it's a little bit more obvious that um, that we'll see something actually change in there. But, uh, but yeah, we should see that automatically uh, at the start and end of each one of those sections. Okay. And my other question, when for the rails, uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to create like a, a glass rail mm -hmm. um, for my steps as, as opposed to the balusters. However, right. I wanted it um, bolted onto the, to the stringer at the end, at the outside, bolted onto the stringer from the outside. But I'm having a you know a very difficult time getting it done. Mm -hmm. I eventually sort of figured it out that I tweet, you know, I created a custom um, glass rail and attached the, the the fittings, you know. So I you know so when I added it as a symbol, I created a new symbol from it, and you know tweaked it until I got it to look, you know, what is I don't know is there a way to get it done, you know. As opposed to doing it, trying to fiddle with it until I get it done, get it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with um, pretty much again any type of, uh, of kind of custom rail, uh, you pretty much are going to want to just draw in. Um, well, take off the stairs off the uh, or take the railing off the stairs rather, uh -huh. um, and then just draw in um, our own custom uh, railing. So especially with uh, with any sort of glass panel. Um, there's all sorts of different kinds. Uh, we'll have to set it to a panel type, and uh, you know, setting it to to follow stairs, it'll build up on top of it. But um, like you can see, if it's sitting next to it, it, it really kind of won't. Um, mm -hmm. But um, if we did the the half wall trick, let me get that guy out of there. Uh, the straight half wall, oops, uh, will essentially follow in that same kind of look. Um, and what I'd probably try and do at this point would be to uh, to set like the, the top railing as a, a glass panel um, and then the bottom uh, probably just as invisible because that's the only way we're going to really get it to be on the side of the actual stairs itself. Oh. Uh, so yeah, it's not really a, a quick and easy thing to, to do. Um, mm -hmm. But um, as long as we have a, a half wall type wall on the outside, uh, then that should effectively do uh, kind of what we're looking for. Um, where's that room divider? So that's hard to see. It's higher yeah. than it needs to be, but that's kind of what we would be looking at. Um, and then we just have to play around with setting the, the right heights and everything. So not a really quick, easy, simple solution, but um, definitely doable to a, to a certain extent at least. 
Okay, but when but like the custom the custom um new well now um rail, I you know so if you had it on the opposite side, on the left hand side, you have it on the right. So if you had it on the left and the transitioning, however, um mm -hmm. so I, it means that I'd probably have to do a, a, a manual new well at the top at the landing here. Probably yeah, yeah um, I would I would expect that. You can also try to space the stairs apart just a little bit more, and then uh -huh. you can get that null to generate by itself. Okay, okay. Well, thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Taylor, we do have one last question, if you have time for that. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's Amy. Hi, Amy, go ahead and ask your question. Hi. Um, I wondered if you could show me how to start on the outside of a house with the stairs going up to a deck or a landing when like here, everything is not flat. So <laughs> we can't always start with a flat pad when we have some decks and such. So if I have the house and say the floor is four to six feet or the deck is four to six feet off of an existing grade, how do I start that when it wants to go bottom up? To, for an automatic stair. Mm -hmm. So let me just simulate something real quick and dirty here. So whenever we've got any sort of, uh, of terrain you know, differences, um, the, the program will automatically look at and, uh, and see and, and kind of try and determine what the, the, that distance is. Uh, when we're manually drawing in these stairs or drawing them inside, you know, they're always drawing upward and uh, going from platform up to the next floor. Uh, but if we draw on the outside, then it's automatically going to build down and it's automatically going to determine where the terrain is going to be at that point. So if I come in here and grab a... Uh, what if a, you don't have the terrain? What if you're just starting with, you know, the exterior walls of the house and deck? You don't have that information of the train. Um, makes it a little bit tougher because um, you know just clicking to to figure it out on its own is certainly easier. Um, when uh, when drawing in stairs, let me delete some of these things. Uh, same kind of goes in even inside a room. Uh, as I click, it shows the uh, the up direction. Um, if I hold my Alt key or do a a right click and drag, it'll draw that in a downward direction. So okay. I can't force that to draw down an, an indeterminate amount. So if I just know that there's like five treads, I can just force five treads in there. So even without having any sort of terrain, um, I can still force that to build downward. And that's the control key on a Mac? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay, okay great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So that'll wrap that up. I think there's two more uh, webinars on stairs. If, uh, the stick with us for the, the next webinar it is going to be covering L, U-shape, uh, winder, and multiple segment stairs. You know, if your questions weren't answered here, uh, definitely come back around. We do have a, a good amount of uh, training services available as well. So, you know, we've uh, constantly got these webinars, um, uh, training seminars, on-demand classes, one-on-one uh, -on -one training. All of that can be accessed from uh, the web page just under the user center. Um, events, trade shows, and, and training. So we've got a training class coming up, boot camp. Um, so you know, keep an eye out for all these things, and you know, we look forward to seeing you in uh, in future events and uh, future webinars. Again, we'll be sending out the uh, email with a recording of this and a survey on there as well. So fill that out, and you know, we'd love to uh, hear from you. So thanks again for uh, for joining us today.